Hello, my dear students. I hope you are all fine. After finishing the introduction to collection four, we are going to begin with the first selection in this collection, which is the second inaugural address. The second inaugural address is a speech given by Abraham Lincoln at the beginning of his presidential period, the second presidential period. If we look at the book in front of you, this is the photo of Abraham Lincoln, and we have here some background information about him. Abraham Lincoln who was born in 1809 and died in 1865, didn't favor the abolition of slavery. And as we said before, abolition means ending, ending slavery. So he didn't favor, he didn't prefer the abolition of slavery when he became the 16th U.S. president, but he had campaigned to prevent slavery's expansion. On the other hand, he didn't want slavery to expand more and more into new territories. His election in 1860, and this was the first uh, presidential period, led to the Civil War. So the Civil War began directly after his election. Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation in January 1863, and after his re-election, Lincoln successfully pushed Congress to pass the 13th Amendment to the Constitution, which outlawed slavery. So at the time, this 13th Amendment outlawed slavery. Outlawed means that it became against the law. Slavery became against the law after that. Lincoln gave this speech on March the 4th, 1865, less than six weeks before he was assassinated. So he was killed after uh, this speech. The second inaugural address, address here means speech given to people, to audience. So the second inaugural address, the speech given by Abraham Lincoln, at the beginning of the second presidential period. Here, as you read, you should notice how Lincoln describes how the situation in the country has changed since his first integration in 1861. Write down any questions you generate during reading. Of course, the speech here begins by addressing the audience, fellow countrymen. Then he began speaking about the previous four years, the years of the Civil War. And he began to speak about how people felt during the war and what he expects to happen in the following years. Of course, as you know, as we used to, uh, to do with every selection, I'm not going to read the selection because I'd like you to read it yourself. It's very easy, by the way, and you have here just four uh, uh, difficult words with their meanings on the right. And I'm going to give you some guiding questions, because while you are reading, you should have an aim. You should have a purpose, reading for a purpose. But before that, I'd like to explain something for you. Evaluate seminal texts. You know the word seminal? We spoke about it before. It's a text which is a turning point or a text which is very important in the American history. Here we are going to speak about premises, purposes, and arguments. Let's read this part together. Lincoln delivered his second inaugural address in a particular historical context. What was that context? The nation had been at war for four years before this address, and the recent events on the battlefield were making it look more likely that the war might end soon with a Union victory. Therefore, Lincoln's overall purpose 
in this speech was, and this is very important, this is his purpose. What was his purpose? To persuade his audience to adopt his ideas about how the country could best move forward. This is his purpose. This address was Lincoln's opportunity to make his case to the public, to show his case to the public, to share it with them. Lincoln's speech presents an argument. In an argument, let's analyze the argument. In an argument, a writer expresses a position on a particular issue and supports that position with reasons and evidence. In analyzing an argument, it's helpful to keep the following definitions in mind. Of course, here we have four very important definitions. We have the term on the left, the definition, and an example from this speech. The first term is claim. What's a claim? If I ask you what is the, uh, what's Lincoln's claim in this argument, in this speech, the claim is the writer's position on an issue or a conclusion. So the claim expresses the writer's position if he is with or against. For example, here in this speech, the claim or the position that Abraham Lincoln took was the American colonies are justified in fighting for freedom from British rule. This was his position. He sees that the American colonies are justified in fighting for freedom. The second term is the reasons. The reasons here mean declarations that support a claim. So the writer has a claim. He should give reasons for this claim, why he took that claim. For example, here in this speech, the American colonies are oppressed by British rule. They were treated badly by British rule. After that, the evidence, the evidence here means specific pieces of information that support a claim or reason. For example, the British have levied unjust taxes on the colonies for 10 years. And finally, the premise. What's a premise? It's a general principle most people agree with. It links the reasons and evidence to the claim. For example, people have the right to revolt when oppressed. So this is like a rule that can be applied to any country, to any people. And here, as you can see, the premise links the claim with the reasons and the evidence. Okay. So, what you should do now is that you read this speech. Of course, I'm going to send it to the LMS. You will find it on the LMS. Then, after reading it, as you know, you are going to answer the following guiding questions to make sure that you understand, you understand the speech well. Here you have the questions, read the speech second inaugural address by Abraham Lincoln, then reread the lines indicated with each question below. So each question is directed to certain lines. You are going to read these lines and you will find the answer in these lines as we used to do with all the previous selections. Answer each question citing text evidence. And of course, the word citing is very important because in your SAT you are asked to cite evidence from the text. The first question 
You are going to read from line 3 to line 11. And the question is, where in the speech, and especially in these lines, does Lincoln address his audience's expectations? The second question, you will find the answer in the fourth from line 29 to line 34. The question is, explain the premise that Lincoln is developing in the second paragraph. So here we speak about the second paragraph. And then identify specific points that help develop the premise. How he developed his, pre his premise. The last question we have here, the answer for this question will be in the part from line 55 to line 60. The question is, restate Lincoln's call to action in your own words. Restate means you should explain it in your own words. What is the purpose of the speech? And I have already mentioned it during this video. I'm going to send you the selection itself. I'm going to send you the guiding questions and you are asked to answer the questions and send them back to the LMS as a reply. Then, during the next online session, we are going to discuss the answer to these questions. Don't forget to do your homework. Don't forget to send that to the LMS. And please, send it a little early. Don't leave it to the deadline. Thank you for listening to me. I hope you have understood this selection and what you are asked to do. During the discussion, inshallah, everything would be clearer. Thanks for listening and see you on Sunday. Thanks.